Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Democracy 3. My name's Root Negative, and let's play a brand new series. Let me just check my sound levels. Uh, we're a little bit high right now. And yes, Democracy 3. This is an awesome game by Klipsky. Positech, a uh, great company. If you're not following them on Twitter and the various places, keep an eye out, because they do good stuff. So... This this is kind of the continuation of Democracy 2, which came out a little while ago. Uh, they improved a lot of things in it. It is quite an old game now, so let's let's get cracking with it. We're going to play as Australia, the one and only... Well, I won't say one and only. The greatest country of all. <laughs> it reminds me of that, uh, what is it? Where Jeff Daniels is in that, uh, I think it's a TV show. And he gets quizzed on why the US of A is the greatest country of all. And he says, I have no idea what you're talking about. And then goes on this awesome rant and absolutely tears this poor uh, student to shreds. <laughs> says something along the lines of, in case you ever stumble into a voting booth. Yeah, epic. I, uh, I liked that clip. That was pretty good. So Australia is the world's sixth largest country by total area and the world's 12th largest economy. A relatively wealthy country, it has the world's fifth highest per capita income. Australia is a member of the G20 OECD, the Commonwealth and the UN. The head of state is Queen Elizabeth II, but government is controlled by the Prime Minister. The Australian economy is characterised by low debt, continuing economic growth and low unemployment. Now, me being an Australian, I can also add a little bit more uh, flavour to this series, or I hope so anyway. So, you can see that our population is only 22 and a bit million. It's, uh, we, we, <laughs> there's not many, very, very many people in Australia. Uh, we're a relatively large country. Fairly, fairly big in terms of land area, but gen not many uh, people filling that up. There's, there's more uh, spiders than people. There's more sheep than people, and there's more kangaroos than people. Indeed, I think there's more camels. Uh, so, we have a GDP of per capita of um, 65,000. 92% uh, of the country is white. Uh, Christian, uh, that's, that's an interesting stat. I don't think that's correct anymore. Vegemite consumption, 22 million jars per year. I'd question it, because Vegemite is one of those things you either love it or you hate it. No, no two ways about that. And the obesity rate has actually gone up. So, um, yeah, not great. Uh, the Big Mac index is actually something that uh, the uh, <laughs> you kind of compare the price of a Big Mac across countries. To, to, to compare your average purchasing power, it's a little bit uh, yeah, problematic. But anyway, uh, this, this is going to be, uh, I'm going to be the Irrational Party. Okay. Because we're irrational. Now, in Australia, there are two main pa Oh, actually, hold on. Let, let's do it this way. The Labour Party and the Liberal Party. Labour? Well, it's actually the... Um, <laughs> get this right. It's the Australian Labour Party. And the Australian... The Australian Liberal Party. And one of them calls themselves the ALP. I can't tell you which one. So we have uh, compulsory voting. It is a monarchy. Uh, earthquakes do happen occasionally. Rarely. Uh, and there are hur hurricanes. Difficulty will leave at 100%. Innate socialism 100%. Yep, looks good. Uh, political apathy is probably a bit higher these days. Because we have two... Neither of the parties really inspire confidence in Australia, but anyway. So let's get cracking. Click, click to return to government. Congratulations on your electric election victory. Welcome to your new job as Prime Minister. The lives of all 22 million citizens are now in your hands, as you will imagine. There are a number of situations and concerns that you will need to deal with as soon as possible. While keeping an eye on the long-term improvement of our citizens' quality of life, Plus, do not forget that you re face re-election in five years. So you will need to monitor the opinion polls and our party membership. Good luck. So right now, okay, in Australia, in, in this scenario, there is a budget deficit. And the... So a deficit is basically where your spending outpaces your income. So you're spending more than you're getting. 
Uh, not, not a great situation for a country. It's not as bad as if you or I were to go out and start racking it up on the credit card. But yeah, it's not great. And the added problem is you can see here the global economy is actually falling. So what that means for our income is that our income will actually follow the, uh, the long-term global economy. So if our debt keeps rising and our expenditure stays high, we're going to end up in a bit of trouble. So let's see what we can uh, chop out of the budget and what income measures we can increase. Because there's uh, lots and lots of things that we can do to try and uh, get our country back on track. So here is the policy ideas. Now, I'm not the greatest at this game, so I'm just gonna play uh, like normal. So you can see that there are some popular items. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, implement the welfare fraud department eventually. I'm not sure I'm gonna do it right now though. Uh, maternity leave we probably need to bring in. The space program will never happen because we never have enough money. Fiber optic internet. This this I uh, probably will implement as a matter of course. Just uh, <laughs> yeah, just as a matter of um, you know uh, because that's what I believe in. Now this this I don't think is a good move because that will drain on the rich and the and the smart, and I don't particularly want that. It would bring us in a lot of money. Tax allowance, no. Generation grants, no. Plastic bag tax, maybe. Uh, yeah, possibly not. Health food subsidies. Tax credits. Right now, I'm just looking to see if there are some popular uh, things that I can bring in. That, uh, ooh, youth club subsidies. I think that this might be a really good idea moving forward. But what I'd really like to do, I think, in the first turn, is remove, or drop down, well, that's popular, drop down some of the pensions. I think that would be a really, really good move. So let's, let's have a look at expenditure. You can see that state pensions are the biggest. So the popularity with voters, you can see, is quite high, 43%. But right now, right, okay, if we, it's costing us 30 billion per quarter. Now, the the deficit, okay, is some 11 billion. That's what we really need to come up with, is 11 billion dollars. So across all of this, I need to find 11 billion dollars of savings and or 11 billion dollars of income. So let, let's start with the state pensions because this needs to go down. Now I think it can really go to, well, let, let's just get our $11 billion out of this. Screw it. What are we at, 30? So if we, we, if we drop it to say 18 billion a quarter. Yeah, 18 billion a quarter. That's gonna take quite a lot of capital. This, this is our political capital. Shows that we've got 26, and we need 26. So let's let's do that. Our first change in office is to make a really big sweeping change, <laughs> and hopefully wipe out our deficit in one fell sweep. Now this is my cabinet, and I find these to be a useless bunch of chumps at the best of times. Anyway. I think that the first real tr thing we need to do is just get our economy back on track here. Now, people smuggling. There is an urgent policy question that requires your immediate attention. Uh, a large number of people have been caught entering our country hidden inside cargo containers. Now, people smuggling in Australia is a fairly... Well, it's a bigger issue than it really should be. Uh, at the moment, the government has a policy of offshore processing which I really don't agree with. So what happens is they they intercept boats in the water, so people running from uh, war zones, refugees, okay? So people that have left their country uh, because it's dangerous for them to stay there, uh, or for, for various reasons they've left. They didn't, they didn't want to leave, but they had to. 
and then they try and get to Australia, they get intercepted in the ocean, the government has been turning those boats back. Or they've been sending them to Indonesia, or they've been doing all this stuff, basically turning these people in need back. Now, you, you take into consideration how big Australia is, those people walking around saying, you know, Australia's full, <laughs> yeah, nah, <laughs> it's not. And I, I think that, you know, we should really, really allow them to stay. I think that that is really what we should be um, should be doing. So, um, the budget report, let's have a look. Now, you can see that I uh, I did manage to wipe out the, the deficit in one fell swoop. I just cut everyone's pension <laughs> for the government. Because uh, that was our biggest spending. So right now we've got a surplus of 1.66 billion per quarter. That means we can now in, um, move on to some more popular uh, things. So let's let's have a look. You can see that state pensions have gone from being number one to number three. Pretty uh, pretty radical change, really. Uh, the income is looking okay. Uh, the income tax is yeah not great. You see the carbon tax. This has really low popularity. However, that's not actually true. It had much. It has much wider base of support in Australia. The carbon. The carbon tax was actually what cost Julia Gillard her her prime ministership. Uh, what a purification. Hmm, that's interesting. So let's let's have a look at our popularity, right? So. We're, we're very unpopular. Now, if we can get it above, say, 36%, we'll be more popular than the current Prime Minister. So I think that that's, a, that's probably an intimate, uh, immediate aim. Intimate aim, please. So I think some of the things that we want to do is start looking at um, some of these red items. So alcohol abuse. <laughs> The ironic thing is, I'm sitting here drinking apple cider, so... <laughs> we have a serious problem with people consuming alcohol in large quantities. I promise, this is my last one. Uh, let's have a look at vigilante mobs. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we should be okay. What's this? Okay. What's this one? Antisocial behavior. Okay. What about this? Pollution. Has a negative effect on. Causes the environment. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, really, I think one of the things we want to look at is car usage. And see if we can drop that a little bit. Uh, uncompetitive economy. Now. It's uncompetitive because of our productivity. And alcohol, alcohol consumption is pretty, pretty big thing there. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than health. Okay, so health is being affected because of pollution, and you can see that, you know, this, this is a, a fairly complicated game. There's lots of things going on here. So let's have a look and see if... So this is uh, special tax breaks given to large uh, foreign-owned multinational companies. Now this is costing us 4.6. The issue is that it's adding a quite a great deal to our GDP. So we're not going to go there. Uh, the working week. Oh, that's controversial. I don't want to go there. Now, citizenship tests, yes, okay. Let's let's have a look at some of these policies. Now this, this is what I want to do. Because it doesn't cost us anything. There's a point at which it balances out. Ah, there we go. Well, that's going to help with the conservatives and the middle income. The poor aren't going to help like us very much. But such is life. We're here to uh, hopefully govern our country to uh, to a better place. Now, alcohol tax. Now, this this can have quite a uh, 
an impact upon alcohol consumption, but it's a fairly a fairly gross tool. Like, for example, you can see here that it would increase poverty quite a bit. So I'm not sure about that one. Handgun laws. License required? Yeah, okay. What about... So this, this doesn't really cost very much, but it has a lot of popularity. Uh, capitalist, well, this is interesting. What if we bring in, say, a, just a really low level? Try and get that poverty down a little bit. Unfortunately, we're going to... We're going to have a, a bit of a hit with the cynical, um, the cynical, uh, where are they, capitalists, here they are. But looking at this graph, the socialists seem to be the majority of the, the people. So let, let's have a look at, where was that, ah, oh, here it was. Let's see if we can... Ah, here it was. Oh. Where was it? Don't tell me it's in. Oh, that's the intelligence briefing. Uh, oh, there it is. So... Well, I can, I can see that maybe the... Well, the socialist is 76% of the of the population, so we'll go with that. Uh, we've got 19 um, points left, so let's have a look through and see if there's any others that we want to bring in. Uh, maternity leave. Don't really want that. Tax shelters, no. Technology grants, no. Robotic grants, no. Hybrid car initiative. I think that this is possibly a good one, so we might come back to that in a sec. Because uh, it's not really that expensive to do the hybrid cars. Ah, this this was better. We'll do this one. So you can see that this, this is positive across the board. Okay, and it has a really good effect on crime, youth like it, youth income increases, socialists like it, parents like it, everyone loves it, so that's why it's a good one to do. So we'll do that. And it doesn't actually cost that much. Now, free school meals, that's very expensive to do. I'm not sure that we'll go there. Now, this this is possibly the biofuel subsidies. We may need to do that. We've got ten points left. Now, I think that for the moment we just want to the racial tension. Wow, unemployment makes that go up quite a lot. Let's have a look at immigration. Mm, yeah, I think that so I think that that's okay for the moment. I got ten points. I think I want to spend them in here. Try and get our policy set up the best we can. Let Let's do the hybrid cars. Because again, this is this is another nice positive one where it'll cost us 480 million a quarter uh, good popularity it's going to drop our oil demand everyone's going to love it uh, so let's uh, let's do it okay I think that that'll that'll do us for this turn so I look forward to seeing you for the next turn and some more democracy 3 playing with the greatest country on this planet